Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 36 of the Noved Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators and communities across the platform. With me today, I have uh, a owner of two different communities, the Ultramarines and the United Republic, uh, Corfuse. Cor, welcome to the podcast. I, I exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Oh yeah, I'm doing amazing today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, of course. I was gonna say. So, for the general listening audience uh, at home, you know, what exactly do you do inside of VR Chat? In VR Chat, I'm mostly the the average dumbass going world to world, being an idiot, making stuff. I've made a bunch of worlds, nearing I think 900 avatars, and I also work on many communities, including two of my own. The Ultramarines and the United Republic, which are both. And I say, absolute dumbasses. <laughs> okay, that's what I do. Fair enough. So, you know, I guess one of the first questions I want to ask uh, before we get into the community specifics, um, you know, what got you into VR chat in the first place? So. I think it was back in about 2019, I started looking through YouTube, and it was few YouTubers like Lolothan and James Ski got me into it. I was still in school back then, and I said, hey, why not try it? I got my first PC, went to desktop, and kind of got it from there. Then I got my first headset, and then it's rest is history. And I'm still here for some reason. <laughs> fair enough i feel like uh, a lot of people who watch you know vr chat youtubers kind of like you said james key and lolathon like they'll come onto the platform and then they'll never leave because they they just they, yeah. they learn to enjoy the platform so much um because there's a lot there's, of there's a lot of great content there's creators many out there. cracks and crevices oh yeah for sure and so many places to be at like everyone everyone finds their place in here if you enjoy vr and being here like there is so much to do and so many different places no absolutely i was gonna say because you know with that right um because you said it was about 2019 so i guess one of the questions i wanted to ask um you know because you've been on for about five years now and you know in your opinion what w when you first started on vr chat what was like one of the things back then that was like for you maybe like historical like, what was, like, a key memory from, like, when uh, you first started? Probably, like, this This is very nostalgic, but, like, the very first time you heard the loading music, that, like, every time thinking about it, it's just, it doesn't feel the same anymore. But the very first time I loaded in and I heard the music that everyone hears and now probably hates because, thanks for kicking me out of Steam. Can I log in now? <laughs> Fair. Uh, That's but probably one of the most nostal nostalgic things, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, because so with United Republic and uh, Ultramarines, you know, with you being the owner and founder of them both, um, I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask, because um, I believe United Republic came first. Um, just kind of go in the timeline. I could be if I'm correct. Um, so what kind of got you into starting the United Republic? So the United Republic didn't actually start. But I was dragged into a, pretty much like four friends, started a clone group. We kind of did shenanigans there. It was back in the day when raiding was also a thing, casual things, doing gooberism. But then we realized, hey, we need avatars. And I lo we looked at prices like, oh my god, my wallet's gonna disappear. And then I just started learning a bit, taking baby steps. A lot of things happened on the way, but let's just say it lasted about a year. Then the group sadly died, but then pretty much the people from there had the idea that, hey, what if we take all the things that we learned from this and put it into a group? And... The group still stands, even though I don't, I don't do stuff there anymore. I'm still the owner of it. But the group still stands on the helpful watch of person that you probably see in the Great Pug 24-7, Ghost DK. He nowadays runs that boil. I gotcha. So, yeah, it kind of went from a friend group into, you know, essentially what it is today. 
Um, so I guess for yeah. the general listening audience, uh, what exactly is the United Republic? So the United Republic is, it's pretty much Star Wars. It's like the Clone Wars era. And it's on the level verge of multi, multi-purpose groups. So we, we do Avatar PvP, which is a big thing of mine. And some light roleplay, casual things, and simply just being dumb clones. Like, Mil, Mils, we make a joke that Mil seem bad, stupid is good. Because that's what we are. We, if it's dumb, it's most likely not work. And we, our prior focus was that people enjoy themselves, have fun. No, absolutely. Um, I was going to say, because, you know, United Republic has, if I remember correctly, they have worked with, like, other, like, PvP and Milsim communities and doing, like, events and stuff. Um, so before we get into that stuff, um, I guess, you know, what is a typical, like, event for the United Republic? Like, what are some of the events you guys do? So when I've last been there, actually, we had an event with Fine Enough, the clones the United Republic's clones and the Ultramarines yesterday, which we pretty much, since it was Halloween, we did kind of like the, an infection where a bunch of survivors need to survive, you die, you become the infected. It was pretty much average zombie survival on and King of the Hill at the same time. It was pretty fun. Oh, we did it. No, fair enough. <laughs> so, you know, while you do like the PvP, you know, style events do you guys do like other events like more like social side or is it kind of yes we do something that like the lpd does which is going around worlds patrolling places having some light rp scenarios here and there casual game nights even sometimes drinking nights because why not sometimes you gotta have good time with the lads fair enough i mean yeah i mean you kind of you're talking uh, before we start recording like there's a lot of there's a lot of times where like drinks definitely are uh definitely favored when it comes to <laughs> events and stuff. <laughs> when it, when it comes to Avatar PvP, uh there's something going on that drinking and driving is bad. But grabbing this gun or sword and drinking is good because <laughs> I gotta say, in Avatar PvP oh in Avatar PvP, having those times when you're just enjoying a fellas. Having a bit, bit, bit buzzy on the head and just fighting each other, it's always a good time. And a lot of laughs. That's one of the most key things. No, for sure. Um, yeah, obviously we don't condone drinking and driving IRL. That's, I just want to disclose that. Uh, VR is oh, fine. No, def- definitely VR not. is fine, but n- not in IRL. If you wouldn't do it IRL... You Separate don't. those two. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but yeah, to, kind of to go more in depth with the you know the group side of United Republic. Uh, so when when exactly did the United Republic start? The United Republic, I think it started around like twenty two or twenty one. I think I am not hundred percent sure. But I know we were at the last uh, VR con, but we also were around before that as well. So, kind of get a time frame from that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember when it was, but uh, that would be. The last one was. I believe that was 2022. Yeah. Okay. So 2021 then. I gotcha. Um, I would say with that, um, you know, did you did you ever expect? united republic to grow as big as it has now uh i did not i thought it's gonna just small friends having doing what they like doing combat all that and before we had the new era i i did not expect like the vrc group right now has almost a thousand members which is absolutely insane I say people love their drunken Star Wars shenanigans, that's for sure. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes stupid works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're watching this podcast, so, I mean, eh. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Uh, but I know, I'm gonna, I know people are going to watch me like, no, but you're not stupid. Like, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I do it to myself. But <laughs> anyways, um, but it's, it's definitely cool to see that, you know, United Republic has grown so much. 
uh, over the you know oh, yeah. past couple of years. Now I guess it'd be three years since you guys have been around. If you guys started in twenty one, yeah, uh, I'll say you know realistically what um because i know you said you're not like active per se you're still the owner though you know uh i know you guys said or i know you said earlier you did the uh collab event with ultramarines uh together um you know do you think that when it comes to uh unite republic in particular you know is it more like an in and out thing like you see people come and go or do you have like a lot of people like stay specifically for you it's, know united republic it's it's kind of like it also like sometimes you feel like doing star wars sometimes it's this but over the years i've seen a lot of people come and go and return multiple times like there's there's constantly a good flow sometimes it's a bit more lower on the numbers but sometimes it just spikes up through the roof i gotcha I'll say it, it's kind of cool to see you know that you know you still have people return like if they leave for maybe a little bit for you know reason xyz you know but they'll come back you know give it like a month or a couple months time or i guess a year because you guys have been around you know it's it's cool to see that you guys have that retention of like people wanting to come back you know it because i remember specifically uh i want to say it was last year's not this year's but 2023 uh project fest uh i know you guys were there as well and uh you guys were roaming around and uh, doing some wacky shenanigans every now and then. Um, so I guess, cause you, you've done a few conventions, you know, with United Republic, um, what's, what's kind of the, I guess the general stasis or general statement, I should say, um, when it comes to like you guys going out to do like, you know, VR conventions and stuff. Uh, usually the stuff we're going to aim on, like bringing in like that, when we like to do, we just sometimes did like these massive campaigns. Like, if some know, example, the battle for Umbara from the Clone Wars, we pretty much recreated it, made avatars and a map for that, and stuff like that. And I think the first project festival we held, the Battle of Camino. It's it's pretty much we want to that bring that like Star Wars, but at the same time, I think there is somewhere a picture of in VR Con. Uh, I think it was fifteen clones doing a conga line. Why? Because one of us said that would be fucking funny. <laughs> I remember in PJK there was something similar that we did, but it, it's pretty much like our whole when I was still in there, and I know I know knowing girls, the still the thing is that you ask your team and your people what would be stupid and what would be funny, and that's usually what we go with. <laughs> Fair, valid. I get that. <laughs> that goes with a lot of things. I mean, because realistically, like. Everybody enjoys this platform because people can let loose and have fun within reason, oh, yeah. within reason. I got to I got to disclaim that every time I say that within legal reason. Anyway, um, but <laughs> there's been too many, too many weird things going on with, you know, things. But <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'll say it's definitely it's definitely a, a good thing to, you know, have a group of people that you can just do absolutely funny things with and you know have fun together and make amazing memories overall um you know so i guess kind of to you know switch it over a little bit um you know because you've you know you've been on the platform for a while and you said you made over hundreds of avatars so i kind of want to go into that a little bit uh before we go into the ultramarines so with that uh one of the questions i wanted to ask um what was like the biggest struggle for you specifically when it came to avatar creation? The biggest struggle was probably when, like, I started with the 2.0 SDK system. For those who know, it's the old fashioned way if you have those gesture animations, no toggles or anything. I started with that and, like, transitioning from that to the 3.0. Because holy, holy hell, it's so much, it's pretty much unlimited possibilities. You just have to think how you can make something happen. Because anything is pretty much possible. It's just about how you execute it. Hmm. I gotcha. So, um, because, you know, you've been around since, you know, that era. Um, you know, what, how difficult was it to switch from the SDK 2 to 3? You know, because, uh, and not to mention all the Unity changes, you know, all of the, 
um, you know, the SDK, you know, I guess my, what, what I'm trying to essentially ask is like, you know, was, did you expect it to take less time or did it take more time to do like the new upgraded systems? That's a really the weird way of phrasing systems, that. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's a very, <laughs> it's, it's somewhat, sometimes it's a bit difficult, sometimes not, but probably the biggest thing that people joke around, especially in the Ultraman, is me complaining about the new SDK updates and how many things break that I have to fix because the PV system is not meant for a VR chat. It's not built for this. It's not built in. It's completely made by Fluff to this for. I, I think it was a joke that they made it for, but that's up, that's up to him to explain. But simply said, a lot of things break, and I haven't even touched the new constraint systems and all that. I <laughs> Change is not the easiest thing. Mm. Yeah, no, the VRC constraint system, um, I still have yet to touch it with any of my stuff, too. So I, I totally get it. Um, that's its all. That's a whole nother beast. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> from from what I've been told, it's a whole nother beast. Um, but it, it works very well from what I've been hearing. Um, I know, like, this hmm. avatar, like, I can remove my hat and throw it. And any anytime I update these avatars... Um, like it, it's like oh yeah you're using unity constraints please use vrc constraints and it's a whole like it gives me error messages after error messages i'm like oh no they're gonna start they're gonna start pounding down on those i'm like oh it's jover we'll see how it goes we'll see if I, we'll see if i can get to keep the hat or they're, at least uh, <laughs> keep it on the head few i know there's a soundboard of me on our discord server literally me screaming at unity <laughs> for giving those those holy red marks that you have to look at. Oh, there's a broken script there. Please fix it or remove it. <laughs> the the, de the famous stare. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a crazy thing um, when it comes to you know everything because um, there's. There's a lot. Realistically, there there's a lot. So I, I guess kind of to go further into that. So, you, you know, you said you made hundreds of different types. So what exactly, like, different types of avatars have you made? Uh, it's <laughs> it's mostly between, like, franchises. Most of them are, like, Star Wars, clones, stormtroopers, droids, space marines. Most of them nowadays is just making stuff for groups, what they ask. Mainly ultramarines, because Blueberry is my beloved. But there's also stuff like few LPD models that I'm still getting yelled for because I don't know, it's funny. <laughs> and some some casual stuff with like mainly mainly it's like all of them have some sort of a function and some sort of a place to be. Usually for groups, because I wherever I run, I don't I usually like making my own stuff for them. Like at the Blood Ravens, I have my own things that I wear and few models that I made for them. LPD, I have my own model, even though it's not approved. Still there. And Ultramans, of course, I have too many. Same with clones. So many, many places, many models, many things. Fair enough. I guess, you know, kind of to go a little bit further, I would say, you know, did you ever think, you know, now that you've made all these avatars, you know, do you think that there will be, like, eventually a way to because I, I actually talked about this topic uh with another avatar creator uh john coday um you know would would a system in the vr chat menu help you when it comes to like finding avatars like that you've created specifically because you have like the favorites right but like if you could if you could organize in your menu like your creations your created avatars would that be beneficial for you <laughs> VR chat, VR chat, for the love of God, if you hear this, add a search bar to the fucking uploads. <laughs> I mean, yeah, someone it's... asked me for an old model. I have to manually go look for it. It's not fun when there's actually, let me get the uh, 899, one away. <laughs> it takes a bit, especially if it's an old one, like in the middle of summer. It's like, okay, I made it about this ton, and it's just scrolling yeah, just, and trying to find it just casually just throwing your arm out <laughs> trying to reach out to it <laughs> yeah um but no it it, it was just a thought because like realistically you know VR, with vr chat you know while 
yes, EAC happened. A lot of supported stuff was taken down. They are slowly getting back to the community when it comes to features Definitely. and stuff. Like, yeah, we now have, you know, we now have persistence on the horizon. We also now have uh, flying, you know, vertical cameras instead of, you know, um, having to, you know, force edit them in a weird way. Like, it's, we're slowly, we're slowly getting there. You know, hopefully pers the persistence beta will, sh you know, show amazing stuff, you know, in the long run. Um, because I know a lot of world creators, when it comes to the game world creators, have been looking forward to this for a long time. Oh, yeah. That way you don't have like a, you know, 190,000 like text string, you know, like, you know, <laughs> or, you know, you don't have to save codes. It'll just automatically do it for you, um, which will be nice. Oh, yeah. It's been very handy. <laughs> Other thing is like one thing as Avatar PvP, it's very like outside system. It's like we deal with a lot of latency. We teach like how you can fight with the latency, like aiming ahead, how you do melee with latency. Like one thing I wish one of one of these days we see is like reduction of latency. Because my god, that would be a lot. Like not just for Avatar PvP and all that, but like in general, imagine giving someone a high five and you don't it doesn't go through. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Actual like, proper. Yeah, like a like a force collider type thing. It just poop. Like it just stays there. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I would say with that, right? Like just kind of yeah, we're gonna go on this tangent for a second because now I'm interested. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's one of those things. Like, there's a lot of different platforms now, and with them all going on to. Like you have, you know, you have your, you know, your meta standalone, like your Android side, you have your PC side, not to mention with how many different types of PCs there are, like whether you're a laptop player like myself, or you you, you have this big beefy PC, oh, yeah. you know, it's, there's a lot of things to account for when it comes to latency, not to mention the internet side, you know, people running potato internet. Um, would I love to see something happen of that, you know, caliper? Yes, of course. Like, obviously. But with how, and not to mention like Android phones, iOS, bro, we are, we're, we're about to hit another point in why? VR chat. Why? <laughs> well, I get the reason why, because, you know, it's, it's another way to extend the platform, you know, and it's, it, it'll make Bits people aside, want... I understand that. Yeah. Use aside. Why? <laughs> I've said this. I've said this one you know, on a few episodes already. But I'm waiting for the day that uh, the Android side or iOS side specifically makes it to where you can do like you can turn your phone sideways and then have it uh, be like double I, and you just oh, throw it in like no. one of those like cheap cardboard like those cheap like five dollar <laughs> like wannabe headsets that you put your phone in. I'm telling you, man, it, VR chat. It, it would be possible. VR it, chat. It if that happens, I'm, I'm 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 claiming it on this podcast. If that happens, I'm claiming that I had the idea. I'm claiming it here. <laughs> I've said it on like four different four different episodes now. If it happens, I want I want some type of acknowledgement that I came up with the idea, even though somebody's probably already had it before me. <laughs> it's public. It's public knowledge at this point. I have said this on at least four episodes now. But... The part that hurts, like as a person who's been studying all this stuff, and even works on this slide like it's definitely possible right <laughs> which scares me bro okay realistically right could you imagine vr chat on the nintendo switch with the nintendo labo vr headset i could definitely like then at least the nintendo it's, it's switch runs a good motion. processor yeah at least you oh know, yeah definitely it's a lot better than the android but it's not quite there for the pc side it's like a middle ground um, like, yeah, it can run. It's pretty much good pretty games. close to a quest. A bit better, actually. Like, yeah. Really close to quest. Yeah. Bro, VR chat, you know, knock on wood, get on it. <laughs> you want to expand your platform? You Go to the stickers. Nintendo Switch. Bro, I mean, really? stickers. I thought it was bad. Then I saw what, what kind of goober stuff people were doing it. And now I, 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 I just say to myself, where has this been over all my life? <laughs> Yeah, the no, I'd say stickers have been definitely a blessing when it comes to that. It's it's definitely crazy like 
some of the things that are coming out because some of it's like really it's they seem like small things and trust me i with how many people like i've gotten to talk to regarding this you know there are a lot of people that are upset that it's a vr chat plus feature honestly i don't mind it to be fair like you know vr chat's gotta you know pay their servers they gotta do their thing i get it yeah you know it's it's honestly better to have like this like vr chat plus having all this functionality because that also gives the devs more freedom than the companies who fund them. Right. Because the ones who are funding them are in control. Like, more player funding, it also gives us us more control of what we play. Yeah, not to mention, VR Chat's a free game, mind you, on all yeah. platforms. Like, if, if we didn't have VR Chat Plus, like, this would be a very expensive game to run. It would be a struggle and a half. Yeah, like... Especially with the amount of players right now. Like, it's it's insanity. Oh, yeah. I would say, you know, not to mention, we're now hitting, you know, maximum heights when it comes to concurrent players. Um, that's a good Ko-Fi moment right there. Um, but, yeah, as I was saying, <laughs> you just go, woo! Uh, but anyways, post editor, you know what to do. Um, but, no, I would say it's definitely, <laughs> uh, it's definitely a... You know, with how the concurrent players uh, stat is rising at a constant level now, you know, we're hitting, you know, 100 and, you know, 7, 108, 109,000 concurrent players. Uh, I, I want to say, if I, if I recall correctly, it was either 109 to like 110,000 concurrent players, which is nuts considering oh, yeah. this game has been out for, you know, 10 years. You know, it's 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 really hard to maintain that, you know, that type of number you know for a vr game let alone a game for 10 years mostly there's like other iterations yeah. of said game um anyways i think we've tangent long enough um uh, but um <laughs> uh, i know that i i yeah this podcast has a lot of tangents but we do we do like to get down to the nitty-gritty <laughs> at points um you know, but I guess one of the, um, you know, kind of go into, you know, the Ultramarines a little bit. So for the general listening audience, uh, what exactly is the Ultramarines? The Ultramarines are from Warhammer 40k, which are, if you think of Warhammer and especially the word Space Marine, you probably think about a blue, blue space, the blue Space Marines. That's the Ultramarines. We're the poster boys, which are also really hated in like the general community because bad writers and stuff back in the day but it it's pretty much what we did with the community it's that a friend of mine named the flying flapjack and stuff they, well the old old ultramarine groups there's been a lot in the pc side because there's the quest data and there's pc side pc side has had a few but they went uh, they have they didn't survive long then flapjack told me as a joke i think as one time that we were just making stuff casually Unity stuff, and I was like, hey, would it be funny if you would make the Ultramarines actually work? And it's been a year, and yeah, here we are. How the fuck does this work? It, it just did. No. Said, Go stupid, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's definitely, it, I mean, you guys have been around for, you know, around a year. Like, that's that's crazy to think about. You know, um, so I, I guess kind of one of the things that I want to ask, um, because there's a lot of, um, so yeah, spoiler alert before I go into this topic, Warhammer's a big community in this freaking platform, bro. They, it's it's kind of, it's kind of nuts. Um, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> so I, I guess one it's, of the, it's big. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to pause the episode right here. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for watching the episodes. Uh, it means a lot that you're, you know, making sure to stay this long into the episode. Um, really quick, just want to make a small announcement. I do want to thank some amazing people who have supported me over on Throne. We're currently over 60% funded for the new setup. Um, it means the world to me that you guys are wanting to support the podcast, support all the creations, and help me expand and improve upon the content that I'm making. Um, I got a bunch of special thank yous. Uh, we got Volkashik, Emma Torch, Down Lyric, Asher Derora, KJD, Monk42, Sonic Man7708, Teal, King Royeko, Bunks Girl, Roll Tide813, Maple Moose, and of course, all of the anonymous gifters. Uh, you guys mean the absolute world to me, and I can't thank you guys enough for supporting my creations and everything about. But if you're interested, 
There also is the Novid Squad VRC group, uh, N-O-V-E-D-6608 for that. And we also do now have a Blue Sky account. We're on Blue Sky because honestly, Elon app is... Elon app is Elon app. We won't talk about that, but make sure to go follow the blue sky. Um, I will be posting more updates in regards to, uh, episodes and everything else. Um, interacting with the community more, but yeah, go check that out. But with that, let's get right back into the episode. Woo. Um, so I guess one of the first things I want to ask, so what kind of differs? Yeah. I know you said, you know, they're the poster boys because of the previous writers they were hated. Um, so in your honest opinion, when it comes to the ultramarines in particular, what kind of deters, not deters, what's the word? What kind of defers you from other Warhammer groups is what I was trying to say. So probably the one thing like makes the, the ultramarines different from all the other groups. Like if we take all the PC and quest groups is like, we are very loose shouldered and there's this show called the emperor's text to speech it was made by brava alpha busa highly recommend watching it if you want to have a good laugh it's pretty much uh we take took that as a heavy inspiration we took like all the com- the jokes of the 40k comedy and made it into reality into like okay the ultramarines in this are i am the greatest i am i am the best this, this is i haha we won because we're the ultramarines and generally, like, a big nuisance made into reality. And I kind of integrated that, that we are, we are known, our nickname in the community is our Adeptus Retardis. And it's pretty fitting, because we're, <laughs> we have, we are a bunch of idiots with big power armor. And so one time there was, this is an example that happened, like, last, last year at the start. One of my captains... Uh, he was holding a speech for our people, we sometimes do light roleplay. Like, Space Marines, very deep voice, mechanical voice, all that. And he just started with the, I cannot see carriers of the greatest ultramarine of them all! Like, a very goddamn high-pitched voice. And making everyone lose it completely. <laughs> like, it's all about, like, what brings the people together. We, like, that's, that's like, our spirit-wide. We are very, like, we want to keep all drama out no matter what i that's my main priority i am very jumpy to the gun when i see like someone causing something because i i I don't tolerate that i want to keep a safe space for everyone and that everyone has fun here and everyone who feels welcome because in the end like I, i i would deal with drama if i would get paid to deal with drama but i spend my free time here so why the fuck would i bother so why not make it make a space and place where you can enjoy your free time, have fun? That's the spiritual wise. It's a safe space, bunch of idiots who are just there to have a good time. Now, function wise, what makes us a bit different? Like there is few groups, but I'd say our avatars, like they are constantly evolving. I want to make like bunch of new stuff. Bunch of like recently we got a lot of customization our models, reloading systems, everything. Like it's it's all about like bringing bits and pieces, taking ideas. Like hey, would this be funny to try? Like recently we did PvP a lot, like mainly that. But recently we've gotten into light role play. We've done some sector patrolling, going around VR chat, being goofy big space marines, looking for heretics, lo- looking for that, looking for relics and Caligaris arms and legs because. Things happened. That's in the group itself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably one group that, like, when you look at the unique Warhammer groups, there's two that really pop up, which are, are well, one, the, the, when you think about VR chat and Warhammer, you probably think Red Bee people, the Blood Ravens, led by Flapjack, which we, the Ultramarines are actually a sister group to them, since we kind of got created from them. And with their help. So it's kind of like idiots creating more idiots. And that's kind of, we, we like we like doing a bunch of stuff. It's all about making new stuff, trying out new stuff, and in general, have fun. That's ah. the key component to all of it. I get that. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
so i guess kind of to um you know kind of to show off a little bit um you know is there like a prime example for like the ultramarines avatars that you could show off oh yeah i do have one of the more newer ones right about where did i put it, it was right here uh scrolling 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 please Man, where those the folders fuck is would it? be nice <laughs> Just give me a search bar. That's all I need. <laughs> or I'll take this example. This it's they are big, big, big space marine. And recently, when with the release of Space Marine Two, we've had a lot give of fun a, time. Give it a second as it loads. It. There we go. Oh, and... There we go. Might need to extend it here. Actually, I'll zoom in on you. There we go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> So the models are pretty much, they've evolved over the years. This is one of the latest, so stuff that we have is like, first of all, there's this one nice HUD system we have, built-in mini-maps, radars. You can see my eyes move, like, highlight when I speak. We got a bunch, bunch of stuff on my face. Thermal functioning, thermal vision, night vision. You got fog coming out of me. Engine heat, everything. And that, that's it's it's a lot of cosmetic stuff nowadays, especially since Space Marine 2, everyone started to salute, do a Space Marine salute, so they asked me, can we put a contact so we can just bang our chest and salute, so there you go. It's 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 a lot of stuff, but main main part is, of course, the weaponry, which are all PvP compatible. Gun, you got your... That didn't scale properly. <laughs> You got dead pistols, knife no, up there. No, oh, nice. It's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of units. This is one of the more more basic infantry units that we have. Fair enough. I keep hitting that damn contact. <laughs> it's all good. Um, no, it's really cool. So I guess kind of like out of curiosity... You know, because th you said this is like the basic infantry unit. So, like, if if you want, because I know you're probably going to like scroll your bar, uh, scroll your search bars. But like, what what's like one of the you know, uh, like first examples of like maybe some of the Ultramarines avatars that you released? Uh, one of the more rare ones that we have is something like dreadnoughts, big boxes that walk with legs, big gun. We got tanks. Vehicles. Actually, we don't have many flyers, but uh, let me let me try to find what would be a good example here. Let's see. Let me pull out if I can find there. I need to turn extremely small for this since it's a it's a big boy. It, so just give it a second. <laughs> let me, let it unpack. Where am I? Oh. <laughs> I, I have to be extremely small because uh, Hot Wheels. Hi. <laughs> so this is one of our vehicle crew models, which is uh, tiny boy. I'm normal, not normally a big boy normally, I promise. But uh, we have stuff like this. Like you have a normal model, you can go do things with this. But then you have a toggle that pretty much just pop. And now you have a tank. Oh, nice. Which, which... You actually, this, this is something I'm really proud of that took me way too long to make that it shouldn't, is you actually move this. That is hands. really cool. It also has like this, something I, I toyed with fist bones, it's got a bunch of guns, engines, even interior stuff, but one thing I toyed a lot with was that it actually moves like a tank. Even, like, I can, I can do full-on 360, and it's just like the, the body moves with it. <laughs> That's really it, cool. It, it's a tank. You got a whole tank. That's pretty cool. It's a tank. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I do love. I do love the fact that the camera followed it almost perfectly. <laughs> it just followed. Woo. <laughs> it just snapped down like high. Yeah, like oh, there you are. Like <laughs> the the deal with the lag spike all of a sudden. Bunga bunga. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. Now, you, now, you, <laughs> now you're just so small. You're just so small. That's funny. Um, well, that's cool. I'll say, yeah, kind of going, 
you know, because you do have uh nope, I gotta keep it on you or else it's gonna <laughs> you're gonna be out of shot. But kind of uh, uh let, me, let me let me get the <laughs> there back, we go. back to the less of a midget. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there, there, there. Tracking can you work for once? Thank you. There, there we go. We, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's really cool that, you know, there's different types of uh, uh you know models when it comes to like, you know, vehicles and you know infantry and all that stuff. Um, this is why I'm very excited. Like I have a lot of PVP communities coming up down the line. I'm super excited because I, I love to get like in the nitty gritty stuff, um, when it comes to like yeah. these types of things. Um, I'm, I'm mainly like, I'm one of you probably, like, there was this other guy who also does vehicles. He, Jonas von Holmster, he does vehicles. I mostly do vehicles for like tanks nowadays for the groups themselves. Mostly, I'm 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 the weaponized vehicle guy around. I think at least that's what Flap called me. Fair enough. Yeah, no, Jonas is a good friend of mine. I I've met him a few times. He's a he's a good homie. But uh, I'll oh, say, yeah. I definitely need to get him on the podcast at some point too. There's 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 a lot <laughs> he's of a people. Funny owl, man. There's a lot of people when it comes to the PvP like role play communities that I need to get on the podcast. There's a lot. Oh yeah, I. Bro, if 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 I had a if I had if I had the money to hire an editor to do my style of editing, <laughs> oh dude, it it'd be cooked. It'd be it'd be it'd be Jover. But um, but no, I do everything myself when it comes to the podcast. But not the point. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's it's still really cool to see that there's different types of avatars. Um, now, if I recall correctly, um, you actually do uh make worlds as well. Yeah, I've made like casual worlds for I uh, mainly like all the worlds I've made are for groups. Example, uh, I've made hold up, let me think. Uh, about five home worlds for the United Republic, and then we have the home world for uh, Ultramarines, Macrag's Honor, and few PvP maps as well that are public currently. Then I also help with some side projects with other groups, but mainly. I, I pretty much just do worlds. I have something in the works in the background for a new combat map, something a bit more unique, inspired by one of the new missions in Dark Tide. You'll probably see that if I, unless my, unless Unity says, uh, big fuck you and breaks the project again, but hey, it's Unity. No one knows. <laughs> Fair. Um, so I guess I get to ask you the, uh, the age old question when it comes to, uh, multi creators of, uh, Unity when it comes to, uh, VR chat. So which one do you prefer? Making avatars or making worlds? That's a tough question since they are like completely two sides of the same coin. Of course, like Unity knowledge, it goes far. But, like when it comes to making both, it's like sometimes I feel like like hey I'm gonna make a new model I want to make these things and then there's world making that it's like it's it's all about you wanna work up oh, there it goes again <laughs> <laughs> you wanna work Good. on some smaller things that are models even though they aren't small if you look at the goddamn animators and worlds which is programming my beloved please send me to hell for that uh, it's it's all about like what is the feel. Pro- world creation usually on my case is much more like larger than I take weeks on making stuff. Avatars I can pump like one a day, depending on the mood. But world creation is like if you wanna, it it takes that like inspiration to get to it and like that motivation. Preference wise, even though I make a lot of avatars, I've been I really enjoy like level designing and all that in world creation like. Before we go to making all the systems and all that, like creating the layouts, all that, it's, it's really relaxing compared to avatar creation because the move this here, make sure that moves there with this parameter, all that sort of stuff. But like the world creation, it's mainly like the more you can just grab a cup of coffee or tea and just work on it for hours, get some good music or a podcast on the background. You'll be good. Yeah, it's was... it's really like up up to the day. <laughs> There's really no <laughs> winner there. No, absolutely. I'll say it definitely. Uh, it it definitely is like you like you said, two sides of the same coin. 
Um, so I guess kind of to, you know, kind of go into that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, cause you said you make, a, you, you could, depending on the mood, make like one avatar a day, you know, and you know, a world within, you know, so much time. So what do you think in your opinion is, you know, the bigger payoff? Do you think avatars are the bigger payoff or do you think making worlds is a bigger payoff? Like what, um... what, 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 what gives you more of a like satisfaction, I guess is what I should say. So with worlds, it's people, of course, both sides. There's a lot of people who will be very cri- cri- well, criticize them with like, oh, you did this wrong, oh, you did that wrong. Good sir, have you even touched Unity? It ain't that easy. And then there's the part like worlds, like when I made the, I remember when I made the Coruscant military base, was used in you many people will probably see if they saw pjkt that was the pre-lobby and one of the home roles for the clones same with camino it's like the biggest price and this sounds very cringy but it's true is seeing like all those people that are part of the community and actually seeing like like one thing that like makes me very excited when i see like in social media like hey this cool world that we found and it's one of my is like oh my god someone liked it <laughs> Yeah, I was always, I was always curious it's, it's, what the reactions would be on that. <laughs> Go ahead. It's it's lovely. Avatars I make stuff because it's stuff for groups, but when I worlds probably like are more rewarding, especially like those moments like on, on Twitter or X. I don't fucking know. Nobody calls I it see, X. Like, these tweets, <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're there's this one guy who like goes around worlds and i i love getting a message from one of my friends like oi dumbass look what i found and it's just like reviewing the world and i've gotten many people like i never expected this but like there was this one world that i privated for a reason so i'm not gonna go into that because no one needs to know sure because it's just more bullshit to the case uh sure like i think i th- uh... Like, one, like, big creator, like, makes boof stuff and a bunch of, like, ego models, boof models, all that. Contact me down, like, hey, can you put this world up? I want to make pictures to it. Like, huh? You want to use my world? <laughs> I mean, fair it, enough. It's, it's, always, it's always great to see that people enjoy it, and especially because I like hiding Easter eggs here and there, is sometimes, one day we had an event... I think it was like right before the anniversary, and one person found an Easter egg on McCrag's honor and just screamed in the middle of it, Cord, you rat bastard! <laughs> yes, I put a goofy PNG hidden like uh, on the roof, kind of like peeking over a balcony. <laughs> it took, this guy who said it has been around since the start, and the map has been around for a year. And he's been active for a year, and he only now saw it. <laughs> it's it's priceless to yeah. get people like positive reaction. Many complaints come too, but eh, positives win. It's in the end, you enjoy it, your friends enjoy it. Some outsider who has complaints, oh, you didn't do this correct. Cool, you want to do it yourself? Right? No, absolutely. Um, well, I guess that kind of leads into one of the other questions I had for you, actually. Um, you know, cause you, you've done, you know, avatar work, world work, community work, you know, so as somebody who's done all of these things, you know, you know, for like kind of the general, you know, audience who is more interested in maybe starting to do said, you know, whether it be world avatar, you know, communities, what's like one piece of advice that you could give to somebody that's wanting to start so any of this them. Is, this is something I keep telling people because many people come to be about like all of these communities, avatars, worlds. One advice I give to them is go slow. Don't overtake steps. Because many people make the mistake, especially in avatar creation, that they start with Blender. But Blender is a side tool. And you should start with Unity, like, start with the basics, like, okay, you get, you grab any model in the world, like, any prefab, any base model, and just start by getting it uploaded to VRChat, that's a big step already, then, sort of like, okay, I want to add a top hat to it, figure out, like, look up how you can do that, and then it's, like, slow and steady, because nothing happens overnight, I didn't, I didn't learn all this stuff, it took me years to learn. 
Mm. Like it's it's all about, and especially with communities. Like I've I've made communities many, only two have made successful. It's it's all about like learning from your mistake. You can make a mistake. Your avatar doesn't work. Then you look into it. Okay, I made this wrong. Let's not do that again. It's same with communities. You no one is perfect. It's like you you send it on the edges. Simply put, it's like take your time, learn from your mistakes, and know that. No one is perfect. I'm not perfect. I still have many problems that I get bunked for. No, absolutely. And definitely, definitely some wise words when it comes to, you know, taking things slow. And, you know, I get that. You know, that's, it's rough, you know. Or, oh, yeah. you know, if, if you, you know, just talk, you know, one of, I think one of the other things is, you know, if you know some people, you know, that make avatars, it doesn't matter like who they are, what, like what they do, you know, if you're genuinely curious, you know, it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt, you know, to ask like, hey, you know, why, you know, how, how does one do this? I'll say one of the, uh, one of my friends, Catbox, um, or Catboy, Catbox, I'm <laughs> VR cat in the brain. Um, <laughs> No, Catboy, um, you know, he's one of the people, uh, like, if you have questions in regards to that type of stuff, like, he'll, he'll, like, in the VR chat Discord specifically, he'll, he'll be, he'll be one of the people that'll be like, oh, yeah, you just gotta do this, 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 you know, it doesn't hurt to yeah. ask people for assistance, um, you know, it, it might be intimidating, you know, at times, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> It's very intimidating. I myself, I I've lived with very bad social anxiety, so I I example like I can't ask help. That's something I'm still still working on. And I pretty much all the things like only reason like a year ago I learned to ask help from others. It's like if you are like a socially anxious person who can't even ask for help, it's like don't be afraid. Like try figuring out like look okay okay what caused it and like try to recreate it and then be like okay. What if I do this instead? What happens then? Like test things. It's it's not gonna explode. I think. Possibly. Depends on the Unity yeah. version. You, you take things <laughs> slow. <laughs> if it's a new F one, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> and then you know if it's one of the new and upcoming ones for twenty twenty three Unity, good luck. <laughs> we'll oh, see. No. We'll see how that goes. Um. It'll be fine. If anything, it'll it'll bring us more opportunities with the Unity side of Unity. It, it always it always brings more opportunities. Of course, there's the problems like uh, particle spawners, which is a thing like you want to make a particle that you you make it make it appear, and then when it go, it doesn't disappear. That's something like the newer Unity is broke. But we the community found a solution to it. Like within a day, they found a solution. But like comparing the unity as as critical as I am about changing things and going like I love the 2019 unity and 2018 like they are they're good stuff I don't like, like the current one that much more like I do my world stuff on older versions because they just they just they just fit for me better less less bugs more things that are more comfortable with but of course there's like it it's like everything has their ups and downs you got some things that work better but this version lacks and the other way around yeah no it's it's crazy to think about man like it, it's it's wild how far from the original sdk to two to three like it's it's came a long way oh yeah it's 100 oh, percent. as i yeah because i also came in the sdk2 era and it was still way over my head sdk3 it's way over my head um but, but it's yeah. yeah 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 it's a lot to think about um but um just to kind of you know kind of to go back a little bit um you know because we talked about the avatar and world side when it comes to, like you know advice you know now that you have two communities under your belt you know for maybe those out there who like want to start like communities in particular like you know what what is a good piece of advice that you can give them the piece of advice when it especially to new communities is um 
don't be afraid to go like group leaders like example me i like when it comes to star wars communities and all and warhammer i i'm not the biggest i'm kind of a new face in the warhammer side but in star wars i've been around and i've seen all the ups and downs and with the warhammer one the same thing it's it's all about like ask like okay what did these people r did wrong and what could be good like start with like a basic concept don't build a stable founding and then just slowly start building it from there it's like building building a jenga tower you don't you don't want to make it fast that it's like okay i'm gonna take this and the whole thing collapses you want to think carefully what you do because the community is it can be the best time of your life or it can be oh god it's drama 24 7. it's all about like how you build it you want to make a make a let's say, uh, a droid community from Star Wars. You want to think like, okay, what could I use for references? Like, there's this group, what if I go ask them like, hey, what you guys did? And communication, especially like in franchises, and like, if you're doing something unique, I don't know, I, I, I've never done that. I just <laughs> take idea and idea from a franchise and then something, I combine it all together. Other thing is... Have good connections. Make sure, like, you come in friendly terms because being friendly towards other communities, even even if they are being annoying or that, like, in the end, you are all both communities. There's no need to fight. Just, I know it sounds bad, but like, just be friends. Try talking out things, especially because something something historical was made recently was that the United Republic and I think it was another clone group who's been around for a while who've had like very clone groups don't usually like each other. They have kind of like since the start being a big hatred towards each other. But these group, these two big groups actually doing PJKT, the last one, became very close friends with each other and they've been on each other's throats for some time. Like things like these that from enemies to allies because you both benefit from it it's harder than it's harder done than said but it's always like aim for good stuff don't don't let things get into your head because in the end a community you are not the community all the people are the community you are all part one gear of the machine one breaks you either replace it or if it's you are you have the mindset that you are the community a big gear that fails whole thing gone no absolutely i mean that's it's definitely one of those things that um it like you said you know you just got to build it at its own pace you can't you can't force the yeah. pace of the community um you know i definitely definitely can get behind that um but yeah man well, I guess, you know, because we, we are kind of running uh, a little bit out of time, actually. Um, but, dude, it this did not feel like an hour, realistically. Um, no. But, but I do want to, first and foremost, I do want to thank you uh, for coming on the podcast and kind of sharing your story and, um, like, a lot of what you do and, like, how you do it. Um, but before, of course... Um, I just realized my right hand's dead. Um, <laughs> uh, I do want to let you, um, you know, I essentially want to give you a spot to like essentially tell the people where they can find you, where they can find your communities, you know, worlds, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, the floor is yours. So Simba said, if you, you by any chance like Warhammer or some stuff like that, the comedy is you can find our worlds, you can find many of our people, we have our own VRC groups as well, the Ultramarines and the United Republic both got a Discord link. You're free to join us there, we welcome anyone and everyone to join us and uh, probably go shoot people and be an idiot. Also, the Ultramarines can't read for some reason. <laughs> Fair. Many things happened. I, I, it's, it's, it's all about the community take took over. And now we're here, and it can't be stopped. It's 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 a mess, but it's a beautiful mess, both of them. So if you want to have a good time, enjoy some PvP, or just want to have some good friends, kind of hang, come bleh, stroke. Want to come hang out? Feel free to join us. And if you want to have any questions about the worlds or some of this stuff, don't be afraid to come and talk to me. 
I am more than welcome. I mean, I'm I'm really having a stroke today. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Um, but yeah, of course, all of these links will be all down in the description. Um, so I th I know you sent me the Discord. You also sent me the VRC groups links as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, dude, Core, thank for. It's weird calling uh, core fuse. It's weird. It's weird saying like one. Just first. call me core at this point. <laughs> Fair, but dude, thank you, thank you so much for coming on. This was a this was a. Thank blast. you for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, with that, ladies, gentlemen, everybody inside and outside the ballpark, this has been episode thirty six of the Nova Notes podcast. Uh, I do want to thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you, you know, liked what you saw, you know, make sure to smack that like button, you know, leave a comment down below. You know, what, what's your favorite, you know, Ultramarine or Star Wars character? Why not? We'll see how this goes. There's a lot of things I could have said comments. Screw it. Or just whatever your favorite Star Wars character or, you know, Warhammer character, why not? You know, let us know down below. Core will probably be checking it out, see what the you know what what all the hype's about. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But with that, um, I do want to thank you all so much once again for watching. And if you are coming back to check out some of the other episodes, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I do want to thank you all so much for watching one more time. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nobis Club.